Well, it's 8.02, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get rolling here. Good morning, everybody. Week five. Um, how are the complexes going? Hopefully pretty well. Um, that's, it's a little tough, you know, but it's a good time to go ahead and put them into the camp. Um, if you haven't figured out already, um, there was two ways I could do this camp. I could have just stayed with the same kind of sequence of exercises, reps, sets, time, you know, work time, rest time, kept it the same the whole six weeks. But I wanted you, I wanted you to experience the multiple ways you can set up training programs and workouts so that you can now go back and, and you'll find out next week, but I'll give you a little insight. Next week is the best of week, and you're going to be able to go back and pick out your favorite chest and back workout, your favorite shoulder workout, your favorite leg workout that we did over the last five weeks and go back through it again. And so it, we're not going to bring in anything new next week, um, but it's going to allow you to go back through and really figure out, okay, how, how does my body respond best? And so express complexes are tough because you've got to have a series of exercises that you've kind of mastered and that you've kind of comfortable with. And um, if you do have that, then there's a lot of advantages of the complexes. Number one, you're going to be able to attack a muscle group or more importantly, a movement pattern in multiple ways. Like you've seen this week, we attacked horizontal pushing in multiple ways. Um, and by doing that, you're going to hit this three-dimensional body pretty effectively. And you gotta keep that in mind, guys, that if you train the body with the same movement pattern all the time, that's the movement pattern that's gonna get stronger, and the ones that support that are gonna go ahead and get a little bit weaker. And that's not a good strategy long-term to use because what that happens, it leads, leads into is overuse problems. And that's why when you go into the weight room or go into the gym and you see a lot of guys lifting weights, no problem lifting weights. The problem is they bench press twice a week, they squat twice a week, they overhead press twice a week. They do the same movement patterns over and over and over again. And over time, that starts to create wear patterns in your body. Um, just like if you went down the same grass grass field with your car, you're going to create wear patterns and you're going to create a road that you're going to follow eventually. You've got to change it up. And so complexes allow you to train different muscles, but more importantly, different movement patterns, which is really important. It also allows you, as you're going to find out tomorrow when you go through our follow-along workout, you can train your entire body real quickly. I think tomorrow's workout, if you guys get through tomorrow's workout, all right, and you're able to go through all four stations and all four cycles that I've got you going through, you guys have learned 30, uh, excuse me, 24 exercises. So you're gonna actually do 24 different exercises tomorrow, all right? Four sets of, you're gonna do four stations, you're gonna go six exercises each station, and you're gonna find real quickly that you're gonna hit your entire body. So if you can hit tomorrow's workout, and you able to complete it, even if you can't get all the reps and sets, but you can just do all the work exercises, you're gonna be on target for doing really well with RBT. And then lastly, the benefit of complexes is this. it's kind of a combination of metabolic training and strength training. You kind of get both, which is what I like a lot. I, I don't like to train my body just one way or the other. I like to hit both of it, and as you've seen, throughout the week we've kind of strength trained, but then you get that final fourth workout of the week and it's a, it's more of a metabolic push. And so hopefully uh, the complexes have been going well. Don't get frustrated with them, no guys, because I'm telling you right now, it's an advanced form of training. So you've, you've got to be able to flow through things. There's a lot going on. So please don't get frustrated with it. But I did want to introduce it. And I thought this week was the best week to do it. All right. So I've got a couple some questions to go through here. First of all, Tracy asked me a couple questions that I want to go ahead and address or up front so you all know. First of all, she said, hey Dave, what's the dimensions of this band gym room? So I thought that was kind of a fun question. And so I honestly didn't know, so I came back down and looked at it. So here's what you've got. I've got a very unique room. 
This room, if it was just simply a square, would be 12 feet wide, 10 feet long. However, as I look at you guys on the screen, all right, I'm back here. This is 10 by 12, so I'm 12 wide and 10 long. However, my room goes into kind of a hallway. I've got about a six foot hallway that allows me to go ahead and extend myself out another, another 12 feet. So literally from this pipe to how far I can run is approx about 10 yards or about nine yards. So what do you got, 27 feet? I've got a pretty long runway and that's how I've set it up. So in your band gyms, keep, one thing you wanna keep in mind is if you put a bar up like so, Look at the amount of space you have out in front of you because that's where you want the most space. You can be a little bit narrower on the sides, but you want to have a good runway so that if you want to do some locomotion training, you can. And I, my, myself, as well as now my kids are all pretty much graduated out of college except for one, they did a ton of speed training in this gym. They would just come down, they'd hook the bands up onto the pipes, and they would do a lot of first step speed training right down here. The floor surface is just carpeted but it's a real tight uh, weave carpeted, so it has good traction. The only downplay of this room is my ceiling height. I only have about seven foot ceilings here, pretty short ceilings, So, but as I extend out into the room, I get about eight foot or a little bit more. So I've got a little bit more height, so the ceilings is only drawback here, um, but I can deal with that and, and work around that. But man, I'm telling you, this has been a room, I've been in it for over 25 years, guys. Um, and it's had some ev ev revolutions and ev evolutions to it. But what's funny is, when I started this room, it was packed full of strength training equipment. Yeah, I had some weight training equipment here when I first moved to this house. And I scrapped all of that and just made it a big open space. And since I've done that, it's become a much more efficient training center for me and what I want to do. So hopefully that answers your question. I think a 12 by 12 room is kind of a sweet spot. If you can get more of a 10 by 14 or even an 8 by 14 or 15, 16, that's better because rectangular um, is going to be a little bit better than square. All right, so that's the two questions on that. Now, um, I want to go ahead and take James's question about balance. He said, you know, Dave, he, he emailed me, he said, he gave me a, his history and his story. Very active guy, 76 years old, and plays pickleball, plays a little tennis, plays is still an active person um, and has had some joint related issues um, like, like a lot of people. But he said, you know, I get a sense that there's a few senior members in the camp and I'm gonna preface senior members by just saying it's simply an age thing, it's not a function thing. So I don't, when I, when I turn 62 or 63 or whatever, um, you can call me a senior, that's fine, and you can give me all the benefits of a senior too. I'll take the discounts on golf and all that stuff, no problem. But it won't be, a, it'll just be a number because how I base my, by my age on is how I'm functioning. How am I doing? And I've had to make some adjustments like all of you will at times, but um, the biggest thing that, that I have started to notice just a little bit is balance. And that's what James had talked to me about. He said, Dave, can you talk a little bit about balance and how, number one, to use RBT to kind of help me with improving my balance? Because you know what? That seems to be the thing that's starting to limit me the most. Well, James, the good news is you're working on it throughout the entire camp and you probably don't realize it. And I'll take you through five strategies here in a little bit and you'll see what I mean. But keep this in mind about balance. Balance, the definition of balance is keeping this center of gravity, all right, our trunk, some people would call it the core, keeping this center of gravity over our base of support, which, you know, in this case, I'm standing, so my base of support is where my feet are. Think about that for a second. You're going to keep your center of gravity over your base of support. So when I reach, my center of gravity changes. All right, my base of support may not change, but my center of gravity has changed. So when I go ahead and squat in different positions, my base of support has changed. I may split squat, I may double leg squat, but my base of support is changed. So if we take that definition 
and we say, okay, how can I change my center of gravity? It typically is going to be how you move your arms. Are you going to load one arm? Are you going to go ahead and do both arms? Are you going to reach? Are you going to push? Are you going to pull? You're changing your center of gravity. All right. As far as your base of support, it's typically going to come down to where you put your feet. All right. So let's go through five strategies. Let's go through five strategies that you have already been using in the camp to help your balance. Number one, you've been using all of these horizontal attached forces. I've had you doing pushing, pulling, different things, but the point is I've had you attach the band and create a force that comes horizontally, not just vertically. Why is that important? Very simple, guys. As soon as I apply this force to my body, it makes me learn how to prevent myself from rotating too far. So if I'm out here and I'm doing these, they probably look familiar. We did them earlier this week, all right? Here, it's preventing me from rotating too much. I'm having to fight against the band, and as a result of that, I'm teaching my trunk how to statically or stationary stabilize and prevent me from being too aggressive with my trunk rotation, all right? Now, as soon as I put a lift up my foot, now I've created a dynamic version of it. If I step into it, I'm not moving my hands, I'm just stepping into it, I've created a dynamic version. Here's the biggest thing I see wrong when people use horizontal forces for trunk training. They're all doing this. Guys, that's not the problem. You, can, you will rarely ever get hurt accelerating a force. People don't get hurt jumping. People don't get hurt pushing. People get hurt getting thrown back and having to stop. People get hurt landing on the ground awkwardly and twisting their knee and their ankle. People get hurt reaching out and getting pulled awkwardly. They don't get injured by pulling on something. All right? They get injured because they're not able to learn how to slow the movement down. So what I recommend is anytime you're doing a horizontal force, don't focus on the movement going away from the bar. Focus on controlling it and learning how to decelerate that movement. So this side, left side of my trunk is teaching my low back how, how to not get twisted to the right too quickly. So the second thing the horizontal forces do is when I put myself in the thunder band and I'm on the floor, all right, I'm gonna tip this down just a little bit. Try not to lose all you guys. So I'm here, all right? Now, when my foot is in the ground, I'm teaching it how to stabilize in the ground. I'm teaching it how to, when I step, boom, everything engages. When we walk, there's not just this vertical force going down into the ground, guys. There's a horizontal force, and that horizontal force is actually the one that creates the reaction of our stabilizers. In this case, when my foot hits the ground, my butt says, time to go to work. I gotta hold him, I gotta hold him, he needs me, all right? And so, it's that landing into the ground using a horizontal force that teaches our stabilizers how to go to work. So you've been using horizontal forces all the way through, all right? You've been using those throughout the camp and so you've been working on your stabilization. More importantly, you've been working on your balance. Yeah, how to stabilize your center of gravity over your base of support. Second strategy you've been using. We've used this little green dynamic stabilizer. Hopefully, if you don't have one, you use, I showed you the way to go ahead and use a 41 inch band. Anytime you put this above your knees and start working out, your glute medius, right here, glute medius starts to wake up instantly. It's like you put this on your legs and your glute medius's eyes get this big if it had eyes. It's like, uh oh, I gotta go right now. He just loaded me up. And it doesn't matter what you're doing. You might be doing some upper body pulling and pushing, it doesn't matter. As soon as I apply it to the outside of my knees, my glute medius 
activates. Dave, why is it so important that my glute medius activates? Great question. Here's why. As soon as my foot hits the ground, I'm not going to lose my balance forward and backward. I'm going to lose my balance side to side. Guess what muscle in my butt keeps me centered and doesn't allow me to tip side to side? Your glute medius. And so when you see these people take a step and their knee caves in, glute medius. If you go ahead and step awkwardly and you kind of, your upper body kind of takes side to side, what protects you? Glute medius. By itself? No, not by itself. The trunk is obviously a player in that as well. All right. However, the glute medius is a big player. And when my foot hits the ground, the force is coming through the ground first. So who gets called on first? Who's my first guy to help me? Glute medius. Because the chain reaction is coming from the ground up through my hip. And my glute medius says, I got gotcha. you. And then it looks up at the trunk and says, hey, can you, can you help me a little bit? Can you give me a little support here? And so but the glute medius, specifically, my, if I step with my left, my left glute medius and my right trunk keep me from tipping side to side. That's how it works. So now you understand this little green band, you want to be using it a lot because it really helps build that hip stability, especially side to side. So that's the second strategy you use. The next strategy is, we've already talked about it, we, I have, I've had you guys use horizontal forces for lower body training. I know most of you, most of you are used to using dumbbells and doing weight based training or you use the bands and you do attachment free work and all you're doing is creating a vertical force. Well, you need more than that. To work on your balance, you need to go ahead and work on horizontal forces and I've had you training your lower body using horizontal forces. The other great thing about using this horizontal force, man, I, I haven't even gotten into it with you guys and I won't, but by attaching this on, I can work on locomotion movements. I can work on anything I want with this thing around my waist. Guys, if you're losing your balance and you're concerned about keeping your walking Strong, horizontal vector, lower body strengthening. I don't care what the exercise is. Change it up, move it around. But just put this band on your hips and start doing strength training. Start doing movements that I show you. And guess what? It will translate immediately into a better and stronger walker. And if you want to be a runner, great. Get into that. You want to play a pickleball? You want to play tennis? Keep going, but make sure you're training with that because you know what? It's going to allow you to stay balanced on your feet, base of support, because that force is being placed on your hips. And it also frees up your hands so you can still load with your weights if you want. Third strategy, lower body strengthening using a horizontal vector. Neck fourth strategy, single arm training. Man, we've done a ton of single arm training. Now if you take single arm training and you do a horizontal vector, you have hit the mother load because that is going to train your trunk every rep on every set. And if you're pulling, it's going to train your butt on every rep and every set. So guess what? Horizontal, single arm pulling gets after my butt. Single arm pushing gets after my trunk. Single arm pressing gets after my trunk. Single arm pulling gets after my hips. Pull with your butt, push with your gut, and now make it unilateral and you are automatically working on balance and control and stabilization on every workout. Interesting, I'm going to stop before I go into the last strategy. Some of you have been asking me, Dave, we don't do a lot of trunk work. Oh yeah? Really? You do trunk work on every single rep and set as long as you're training on your feet. How much have we done on our butt? How much have we done laying on our back training? Not too much. Flexibility, some stretching. If you guys are starting to see why, where I'm going with this, I keep you on your feet 
because that always makes your base of support a player in the game. And if your base of support is a player in the game, then your trump's got to be a player in the game because you're automatically making your center of gravity have to change around. So, guys, it was a great question, but we've been working on it every single day, every single rep, all time. All right? Fifth and final strategy, tempo. Rep tempo will make your trunk have to work. When we fall, all right, or, and, and lose our balance, it's typically because we're trying to move a little quicker or we got forced because of momentum to move quicker. So if that's the case, that means if I move slower, I have a more likelihood of being more balanced and controlled. And, and you guys all know that, that makes sense. Well, let's apply it to strength training. All right, let's talk about how it can play its role in strength training. So let's say you wanna lock in your trunk and you really, really wanna go ahead and work your balance and control. Do you know that this split squat chest press would be an awesome strength exercise to go ahead and work trunk stability and also to work hip stability and then the whole time you're working upper body strength but you've done it slow, super slow. Be by doing it super slow, the stabilizers have to work so hard. They have to work so hard. That's why you don't like doing them slow because you don't want those stabilizers to work that hard. It's hard, it's hard to do that. So by doing slow reps on your feet, I don't care what the exercise is, you're gonna start really enhancing your, your stabilizers, specifically your hip and your trunk. Now, Let's go ahead and get into rhythm, all right? So your balance is all about not being, I know, it's one thing to be balanced stationary, it's another thing to be balanced on the move. I wanna be balanced on the move because that equals being a little more athletic. If I'm balanced on the move versus, you know, I can stand like this and I'm nice and balanced. However, I don't wanna be like that. I wanna be able to jump and balance. I want to be able to turn, cut, move sideways in balance. I want to be balanced on the fly. Yeah, I want to be able to be balanced and controlled on the fly. So with that, I got to start bringing in rhythm. So now this little split squat that I showed you press, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start bringing in a little bit of a split squat press to get some rhythm. This kind of looks like walking, doesn't it? Because my hand is coming out, my leg is going forward. All right, so I'm starting to bring rhythm in, all right, which we also call mobility into the exercise. And then lastly, let's make it look like a step. Let's go ahead and step and press. So now I've got everything working together. And it's a very dynamic movement, but when I get here, I can't lose my balance. So what you do is with your reps, start stationary, add a little bit of movement and mobility, which is gonna be very natural. And then, hey, can you go to one leg? Can you balance on one leg and step? All right, that would be how you do your upper body. Lower body, same thing, squat, maybe a squat with a little reach, and then a squat or a step action like a lunge of such type. So that would be a stationary, adding a little bit of mobility, and then adding a step to get into the rhythm. All right, and then getting into integrate. So, all that said, take all of that, any rep you do, the faster you move it, the more balanced you're gonna have to be. But don't move fast. If you move fast and you lose your balance, that's not what we want. Slow it down. But the cool thing is, with bands and being a variable resistance, yes, the band resistance is easier here than it is here, but what does that allow me to do? It allows me to accelerate my movement. I can't do that with weight because if, I'm, if this is a pulley system, like a cable system with weight, the weight, the resistance here is the same here. So as I go to accelerate, I got no way to accelerate because the resistance remains the same. So I just recently read an article about building strength and muscle with weights versus bands and, and the article was awesome. I'll be happy to share it with you guys if you want me to share it with you. It was an excellent done article. 
and it was about how skinny people can get stronger and build muscle. Is it better to use bands or weights, or could they do it with bands? The, the following thing, the thing they found out was weights are gonna be better, and, I, and I'm fine with that. I'm perfectly fine with it, and the research and the reason behind it was perfectly okay. But the thing they didn't touch on was I can be super strong and not very athletic. I can be super strong and fall over and hurt my ankle or twist my knee because I'm not very athletic. Guys, this camp, I hope, has taught you that strength is only as good as what you can use it to do, all right? Strength is only as good as what you can use it to do, all right? I don't need to be super strong, all right? I'm learning golf this summer because I got that's the one sport or the one activity I can do and have social distancing, all right? And I'm the terrible golfer, but I'm learning it. And I'm getting better. And the one thing that I'm learning now is with golf, I don't need to be that strong, all right? But man, I need to be concise and really precise with regards to my swing. And so I've had to learn how to use the things I just told you in regards to tempo, control, rhythm. I started my golf game with this little short movement with a very slow swing. That's how I started. And now I've gotten to about three quarter swing and that's where I'm at. So I've done the same thing I just taught you. Slowed my tempo down, decreased my amplitude, got my rhythm, and now guess what? Now I'm starting, I'm starting to get just a little bit of speed. All right, starting to get a little bit of speed. So with that, that's going okay. Let me click this off here. It's my little reminder that Zoom is going to kick me out pretty soon. So hopefully that is helps you in regards to understanding balance. All right. Now we've got a couple of minutes here yet. Um, first of all, James, are you on, on the call? If you are, click your auto on for a second and just let me know if that helped you out. Okay. He said he wasn't for sure if he's going to make it. So that's okay. Thanks, John. So I've got a couple of things I want to make sure you guys are aware of, all right? So first and foremost, all right, um, we do have bands back in stock, which was exciting. We just got them back this week. So if you guys need any kind of bands right now, check out the site and take a look if there's some that you need to kind of fill, your, fill the gaps or as the camp has gone on, you said, you know what, I could really use this one or this one. Make sure you take advantage of that. Secondly, this Friday, excuse me, I think this Saturday, is the last day to check out the camp or join the, uh, excuse me, join the band gym for three months. I've never done this before, but I'm offering opportunity for people to join the band gym for three months. It's kind of a cool deal because it only costs you $20. You get three months to look at the gym and use it and say, you know, would this be something that I would like to have for a full year? And so I hope that that is worthwhile, but I know a lot of you are already band gym members. Awesome, thank you for doing that. But for you that aren't, this might be an opportunity for you to go ahead and check it out if you've been kind of on the fence a little bit. No pressure, not asking to join it, just want you to be aware of it. Last and finally, over the next week or so, you're gonna see me um, asking you to give me feedback. And I'd like three levels, of, three types of feedback. First of all, I wanna know if you liked the camp. If you did, hey, share your thoughts with it because you know what, we're gonna do more, more camps in the future. I want people to know what other people thought of the camp. All right, and obviously if it's been a positive experience, I wanna share that with people. So please share that information if you would. Just give me a couple sentences. It's almost like a testimonial type thing on how and what you felt about the camp. However, I need two other things too. Number one, if, it, if the camp didn't meet with your expectations, that's a bummer, but I wanna know why. I wanna know why, because that would help me restructure it to make sure that I learn from your experiences. And then thirdly, I wanna know how I can improve it. All right, I'm gonna go back into the lab, the band gym here, and improve the camp for the future. So your feedback is absolutely vital to me learning how to go ahead and improve the camp. So please, any of those three would be very helpful for me. So watch for that. And you know what, just, it's just a simple email me, dave at resistancebandtrain.com or 
In most cases, if you get it through the email, you can just reply right to the email because that comes right back to me. All right, cool. Hey, we've got one more week left, but finish tomorrow's workout because you're gonna enjoy it. And then next week, guys, we're at week six already. And then I've got some things planned for you for the final three days. We'll talk more about that next week. With that, hey guys, great fifth week. Thanks for staying with me this whole time. Some of you have been going the whole time. Congratulations, because you are way over top of the hump right now. You are on the downward swing, and you know what? You make up, make tomorrow's workout, and you got it made. Just gotta finish the deal now. You just gotta finish it. Have yourself a good week, a good weekend, and I will talk to you next week as well as next Thursday again right here. And make sure if you got some questions, you wanna be on a hot seat, send it my way, and I'll be happy to help you out. All right? Have a great day, guys. We'll talk to you real soon.